Matt from LeanStacks here, and welcome back to another episode in the LeanStacks Technology Education Series. In this episode, I will demonstrate how to integrate a Spring Boot application with a remote RESTful API using the Spring Framework's REST template class. In this scenario, we have a requirement to add a daily quote API to the Greeting Web Services project. Having researched available quote APIs on the internet, we've chosen to integrate with the quote of the day RESTful web service endpoint from theysaidso.com. Theysaidso publishes API documentation using Swagger, and the URL to the quote of the day web service API doc is in this episode's description below. When you need to integrate, with a remote RESTful API, using the Spring Framework's REST template class is the simplest approach unless the API offers a client library. Spring bootstraps the REST template class with sensible default values which often make invoking a RESTful API a single line of code. However, there are times when we need to customize the configuration of a REST template. Spring Boot provides the REST template builder class and makes it available for dependency injection. REST template builder, as its name implies, offers a number of builder methods to configure a REST template. Let's get started. The quote of the day web service returns a quote in JSON format. The REST template uses a JSON message converter to automatically unmarshal the JSON into a simple Java object. We need to create Java objects which model the quote of the day web service response. Starting from the innermost object in the JSON response and working outward, I see an array of quote objects. Therefore, a quote object is the first Java object we will create. Since the quote object is not part of the Greeting Web Services persistent object model, I do not want to create these API response model objects which within the org example WS model package. For now, I will create them within a new service package. In your project, you may choose to organize them in the most meaningful way to you and your team. To keep the classes for the They Said So quote integration located together, let's create a new package named org.example.ws.service.quote.tss. The TSS stands for They Said So. Next, create a new class named quote. I will paste in the contents of the quote class for brevity. The class is annotated with JSON ignore properties, instructing the Jackson library to ignore JSON attributes in the response, which are not included in the Java object. Each attribute of the JSON quote object is included in the quote pojo, and each attribute has standard getter and setter methods. Let's return to the API documentation. At the next higher level of the response, we see two objects named success and contents. The success object indicates if the response API call succeeded using its total attribute. The contents object contains an array of quote objects. The success and contents objects are top level attributes of the response itself. Let's create classes named quote response success and quote response contents to model these two JSON objects. The success class has the single attribute named total. The contents class contains an attribute named quotes. The quotes attribute is an array list of quote objects just as we saw modeled in the API docs for the quote of the day service. Finally, create a class named quote response. Once again, I'll paste in the contents of this class just to save us time. Remember that the entire source code illustrated in this repository is available at the GitHub URL in this episode's description. 
This class represents the outermost layer of the JSON response. The quote response object has two attributes named success and contents. In addition to the standard getter and setter methods, I've created two helper methods. The first, named isSuccess, examines the quote response success attribute values to determine the overall status of the API call response. The second, named getQuote, retrieves the first quote object from the array list within the quote response contents object, first checking to ensure that the call was successful and returned at least one quote. Now that the model objects have been created, let's construct a business service to encapsulate the logic to retrieve a daily quote. In the same package, create an interface named Quote Service. In previous episodes of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series, we discussed the software development best practice of creating interfaces for business services. The interface serves as the contract against which consumers of the service write their code. In the Quote Service interface, create a method named getDaily, which accepts a single string parameter named category. The category parameter represents a categorization or grouping of quotes which the service client wishes to obtain. Also create a string constant category for inspirational quotes. Next, create an implementation of the Quote Service interface named Quote Service Bean. I'll paste the contents of this class in for brevity and then review it with you. Annotate the class with Spring Service Stereotype Annotation. The service annotation extends Spring's component annotation, which means the quote service bean will automatically be registered with the application context. If you've watched previous episodes in this series, much of the logic in this class will be familiar to you. The class has a logger implementation, and the counter service bean from Spring Boot's actuator, excuse me, the counter service interface from Spring Boot actuator is injected in to collect information about service utilization. Let's look at the constructor. The constructor accepts an instance of the REST template builder class as an argument. The builder is created by Spring Boot and injected automatically. The builder creates an instance of REST template which we will use to call the remote web service. The implementation of the getDaily method is quite simple when you consider all of the activities performed. The method contains the standard logging at the start and stop of the, of the method body, as well as it calls counter services increment method to record that this business service method was called. Next, we check the value of the category method parameter to determine if the client passed a value. If the value is passed, we use the client's value. Otherwise, we use the inspirational category value. The next line of code uses the REST template's getForObject method to invoke the re remote RESTful web service, retrieve the JSON response, and convert that JSON response into a quote response object. The getForObject method is the most commonly used method when performing HTTP GET requests on RESTful web service endpoints. The method accepts three parameters the URL or a URL template of the web service, the class type of the response object, and finally an optional series of object var args which replace the parameters defined in the URL if the URL takes the template format. In this case we define a parameter within the URL named cat enclosed in curly brackets. The REST template inserts the value of the quote category variable into that URL. Finally, the getQuote method is invoked on the quote response to obtain the quote object returned by the web service.
Finally, we need to create a controller class for our own RESTful web service endpoint. In the org example WS Web API package, create a new class named Quote Controller, which extends the Base Controller class. Since this controller is going to have a very similar structure to the REST controller implementations we have created in previous episodes, I'm not going to spend, explain every detail of this class. Once again, I'll paste the contents of the class and review the significant portions with you. The Quote Controller class is annotated with REST controller so that it's discovered by the component scanner at application startup and registered with Spring's application context. We use the auto-wired annotation to inject an instance of the Quote service into this class. To create the RESTful web service endpoint which will allow clients to obtain a daily quote, we create a method named GetQuoteOfTheDay this method is annotated with request mapping, whose elements describe the path, the HTTP method, and the MIME type of the response. In the body of the method, we use the quote service to retrieve a quote object using the inspirational category. If no quote object is returned from the service, we return an HTTP 404 status code, meaning not found, to the RESTful web service client. If a quote object is returned, we return the quote with an HTTP 200, which means OK, status code. The Spring framework takes control, marshalling the quote Java object into a JSON format and creates an HTTP response object and returns that to the web service client. The REST template class writes helpful information to the application log as it executes requests. Let's add a logging appender for the REST template class to the configuration so that we can see REST template call the remote service. Navigate to the source main resources config directory and open the application properties file. In a Spring Boot application, logging thresholds may be controlled through properties. To adjust the logging level of an appender, simply add a property prefixed with logging.level, followed by the appender name, which is typically a package or fully qualified class name. I will add logging level configurations for both the Greeting Web Services root package and the Org Spring Framework Web Client package of the REST template class, setting both of them to debug. By setting the logging level for the root package of the Greeting Web Services project, this instructs Spring Boot to apply that value to all classes within the project. Let's run the application to see our code in action. Open a terminal prompt and navigate to the project base directory. Type period backslash or forward slash Gradle W clean boot run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat server on port 8080. I will test the code using the Postman web service client. The URL field contains the value of the daily quote web service endpoint on our local machine. I'll create an authorization header using the credentials configured in the application.properties file. And finally, the request contains an accept header with the value of application slash JSON. Send this request to the application and wait for a response. Note that it takes a second or two to receive a response. This is because our application running on our local machine is making a call to a remote web service running on the internet. Our daily quote web service responded with HTTP status 200 and returns a JSON representation of the quote object retrieved from the they said so quote of the day web service. Let's look at the application logging. Notice these lines that I'm highlighting. As you can see, REST template logs its activities at a debug level, allowing us to troubleshoot a problem if something unexpected occurs.
If your application needs to integrate with one or more remote RESTful web services, the REST template and REST template builder classes greatly simplify this process for you. The REST template builder provides a simple, flexible, and repeatable process to configure REST template instances. The REST template class performs most, if not all, of the technical boilerplate logic required when invoking any remote API. It creates the request, calls the service, converts the response, and handles exceptions. By utilizing the REST template class in your project, you're able to focus on the business logic surrounding the remote API call rather than the mechanics of making the call itself. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Click the thumbs up button below to let us know that you liked it. Not a subscriber yet? Click the subscribe button below to get the latest episode from LeanStacks as soon as they're published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this episode, see the GitHub repository URL in this episode's description.